Okay, so one of the things um, that we were going to talk about tonight, our micro lesson, um, we had quite a lot of interest in submitting to literary journals um, and also traditional publishing. So tonight, what I'm going to talk about is why and how to submit to literary journals. That's our topic for tonight. And then in a subsequent micro lesson, we'll look at publishing traditionally. So I, it's helpful if you know your why. So why do you want to publish in a literary journal? What is it going to do for you? And if you do know that, it can make it easier to stay committed, you know, to have a system to actually get the work done. Um, so some possibilities for this, first of all, you're going to get validation. You're going to find out that your work is publishable um, and that's going to give you confidence in your writing. And that's a wonderful thing because um, we have to be proactive in gathering to us the things that are going to be strengthening, that are going to help us keep writing, keep doing the work we want to do. And when you're working on your own and it's your belief in yourself that's the driving force, sometimes it can falter. You know, you have to understand what you need to do to get yourself motivated to get back on track. So that's number one, um, knowing your work is publishable. Number two is sharing your story with readers. You know, sometimes um, there might be nostalgia, there might be some, just something that you want to record. Perhaps it's something that has a historical significance. Um, it's something that you want people to read. Um, and then number three, this is also connected to that. Sometimes we've overcome something and we want to light the way for other people. And we may have overcome it or we may have simply come to acceptance of it. Maybe it hasn't changed, but how we think about it has changed. And there are many people who, this is why people read. People read for many reasons, but they read for emotion. They read to understand how people solve problems because even if they don't have precisely that problem, um, to see a, a character solving a problem is inspirational and it may give them ideas to help them, whatever their situation is. Number four is to build publishing credits for attracting an agent or a traditional publisher. This makes a big difference if you're going to be submitting a query letter to an agent or if you're going to be sending to small presses and you want to get a book published, then they're going to look at you very differently if you've already got publishing credits. Um, number five, as your writing improves, you can submit to better journals. So as you get better and as you get familiar with the journals, um, first of all, it's the ones who accept, some of the journals accept almost 50% of the submissions they get. And then some of the journals accept, you know, 0. 0.000 whatever, one. Um, and then there's everything in between. So you can mark your own progress as you, if you are writing short and that's your joy and your pleasure, then if you submit, as you begin to submit to better journals, your credits will improve and also you'll be measuring your progress. And this deepens your joy in the whole creative writing process. And at the same time, you'll come across better and better stories that will, it will be a perpetuating circle, you know, where you're reading better and then you're writing better. Um, number six is you can get, we might publish to get paid. Um, this might be either as a traditional, get published traditionally or as an indie author. So those two markets are very different. The approach is very different. Um, the things you have to do are different. And so you have to understand the, you know, the relevant book market. You have to understand how to position your story to sell. Um, and then of course, promotion also comes into that. Um, and then number seven is the, this quote, some of you have heard me say this, James Clear's quote, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. So that means a system is I write 10 minutes a day or I write two minutes a day and I write 
five days a week, four days a week, seven days a week, whatever it is, that's a system. A system for publishing is this, for example, every other week we do a submission party. So you can get one piece ready, you can come to this, we'll get a market, we'll get a list of markets for you, and then you get your submissions done every other week. So that's a system. Um, and then also you have to decide what, um, how are you going to find out where to send your stories? So Duotrope is, is my platform of choice. There's also Submission Grinder, Poets and Writers, Classifieds. Um, and you can actually just Google, where can I publish, whatever it is, because certain there are certain online platforms who will share, they'll do like a list of 10 or 20, um, and they'll do them, and submittable. Yes, thanks Cassie, submittable is another one and that's also free. So um, as, as I mentioned before, there are 5,000 markets on Duotrope for submitting fiction, nonfiction and poetry. The lesser known magazines respond faster, they publish more submissions by emerging authors. Um, but if you feel ready for those, you know, top sort of more competitive journals, then go for it, absolutely go for it. You will have to quite often wait for several months for what may well be a rejection, but you know, it's a numbers game and this is what a lot of authors do. They submit to the very top ones, then they go to the next 10, then to the next 10 and so on and so forth until, and this is, you know, I, I know some authors who have been bestsellers for 40 years have been supporting themselves with their novels and their stories and this is how they do it. They send to their optimal markets, then they send to their next and their next and their next and their goal is to get paid and sometimes their stories don't find a paid home. They Even these people who've been writing for so long and have been so well published by traditional publishers, sometimes they end up publishing in the unpaid journals just to get the story out there. So that's just how it works. Um, so here's, I'm going to um, pop this, uh, I'll send this out with, with this video uh, later in the week, but this is the list from Duotrope of how you use their platform. Step one is you search, you know, after you've written something, you know you've either got a poem or you've got an essay or, or a short story, whatever it is. So you go onto their platform, you search for it, you then explore the markets that come up. You click through to have a look at the ones that you think might be a good fit. You submit them and then you wait. And it's good to have a list of, the reason I like to have a, a list of sort of 15 to 20 is because it, there's going to come, a submission is going to come back, right? And sometimes you're going to get a form letter and sometimes there's going to be something that says something, if it's encouraging, most journals have two types of form letter. They have a form letter that does not say submit again, and they have a form letter that does say submit again. So if you get a form letter that says, we look forward to reading more of your work, that is a real thing, you can rely on that. That means they do want to see more from you. They're not in the business of being polite, you know, that's not what they're about. Um, so if you get that, you can trust it and you should make a note of that, make it one of your favorites on, on Duotrope, you can do that um, and stay in touch with them. You don't have to respond to a form letter. You wouldn't email back and say, thank you so much. I look forward to saying, you know, don't bother with that. So those are the two types of form letter and then you might get a personal rejection. And if you do get a personal rejection, then you can pop a note back to that editor saying, thanks so much, appreciate your comments, um, we'll be in touch soon. You know, just something to uh, be very, you know, brief and not take up much of their time. And Ninka, did you want to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, um, uh, can you comment please on, uh cover letters and literary journals, because uh, I believe on Duotrip there, there tends to be a attach a cover letter or a, a blank space for it. And, and that always just infuriates me because I was like, just, you like, you either like this story or you don't. <laughs> yes, um, some so, people- But I'd like to hear your view. Yes, some people, if, 
what you do have to do is follow their directions to the letter and and this can be frustrating you know because it you feel like you've done all the work and now you're being made to jump through hoops but the fact is if you don't follow their directions to the letter they will notice that and they might not even read your piece because if you're not respecting Isn't them that just a like a part of the do the duo trope template it depends it depends you have to it's a case by case basis so you you would have to go case by case click through to the journal and go to their submission page and follow exactly what they tell you to do um, so cover letters and also manuscript layout these are two um, separate things that we can talk about um, I can give you an example of a cover letter and um, we can look at um, also an example of a, a manuscript layout that we'll do that in another in another micro lesson because we're going to do a few of these um, but basically you know the cover letter can say dear editor's name uh, please find my story XYZ attached for your consideration that's your first sentence your next paragraph is uh, my work has been published in ABC and if you haven't been published you would say I have been studying writing in you know wherever you've been studying um, and then new line is I look forward to hearing for, from you thank you for reading um, since you know that's the general gist of it but I'll send out um, my cover letter example so you can see it yes go ahead Dan a quick question uh, I haven't been studying and I haven't been published <coughs> and I, I've just been <clears throat> oh excuse me been learning on my own I've been doing that all my life so just so, leave that part out you know just say please find enclosed my poem type and then the title for your consideration thank you for reading I look forward to hearing from you sincerely Dan Wallach it's very you know they're really they're not looking for creativity they're not looking for personality you know they're just looking to see that you have read their submission guidelines and that you followed them that's step one so um, yeah okay so that is the end of our micro lesson for tonight